indeed. And we're going to look at, oh, one of the games of, well, well of the weekend. Certainly the game of the, of, of the weekend in this tournament, I would argue. I, I think it, I would argue it's the game of Sunday. I mean, if yeah. you're only going to watch one game on Sunday and you choose to watch France, Italy instead of this, I'm going to judge you. <laughs> you basic, man. That's not, that's not what you're doing. It's not what we're doing here. <laughs> Georgia against Portugal is one of the, oh, this is going to be a brilliant game. It's a brilliant clash of styles. But it's between two teams that are developing at a rate of knots that have real, real quality in them. Mm. And it's in it's gonna yeah, be two in, teams that only last year mixed it with a tier one side. You had Georgia going to France and mixing it pretty yep. well. You had Portugal hosting Japan and mixing it pretty well. Mixing nearly really damn well. near winning it in the last <laughs> second of it. So oh, yeah. totally. Uh, it's gonna be in the Avchal Stadium in Tbilisi and it's gonna kick off eleven AM uh, GMT. Uh, 3 p.m. local. That's it. Much better than obviously the the Saturday kickoffs, which are clashing with Six Nations. Yes, this one, silly. thankfully, is uh, is is out by itself, holding its yeah. own steam. And you really should make the effort if you're going to watch one game this week. Watch, let it be this one because it's not. It's a clash of styles, which is always fun to watch a physical team play a speedy uh, offensive team. It's also just there's quality dripping throughout. And there's potential for this one to be a real close one. There is. Um, from George's point of view, obviously, just to start it, looking at the hosts, um, they have a 10-point buffer. They had the Grand Slam last year. But this, obviously, is going to be, I think, from, from their point of view, in terms of winning the comp, it's going to be one of their tougher years. They're playing yeah. sides who are desperate for wins every single week. Yeah, Quality sides, extra, desperate extra for wins. Extra desperation with um, that World Cup card. Over yeah. So well, teams like Portugal, even though it's coming to Tbilisi, are going to be coming all guns blazing. And Georgia are going to have to be alive to that. And realistically, their benchmark, they want to be judged, from Georgia's point of view, on, on getting into Six Nations and stuff yep. like that. So anything short of a win in this tournament, and really the precedent they've set is Grand Slams, yeah. and it's suddenly... A yeah, dead, I know, it's high stakes, then all yeah. of a sudden all of the Six Nations chat and everything else quietens down. Yep. Although, to some extent, they need to almost get beyond that kind of thinking, and it's not win at all costs, it's develop at all costs, yeah. so that you're ready in the World Cup, because I think... The Six Nations and everybody have demonstrated that it doesn't matter how many Grand Slams they get, nobody's going to take them seriously yeah. until they do well in these Tier 1 games. But nevertheless, I mean, it's going to be, I think they're I think they're facing a real challenge from below. They are in a good spot. They had a great year last year. They, they had did. a number Talking of players. Talking about develop at all costs, they developed a lot last oh, year. Oh, didn't they? I mean, and, and yeah. guys like Mini Ashvili, what a revelation at fullback, just changing just everything about every dimension of their attack. And Ab- yep. Aprasidza as well at nine, just coming in and changing the tempo. You yeah, know? I mean, they've, um, guys, they've guys now featuring in, in top Couture's teams regularly. Yeah. A lot of guys, in fact, just featuring, just like being excelling. fulcrums it's, in it's, their teams. It used to um, just be props now it's kind of everywhere and yeah. Aprasidza speaking of the devil cu- pulled off a clutch solo winning try from Montpellier away in La Rochelle at the Indeed. weekend broke through did a little chip yeah, it was grounded great, the great ball score. it's just what a guy you know yeah. this, they, 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 these guys are really playing now at, at an elite club level and yeah. that's that's difference making from what they used to play even, even as they hustled hard against tier 1 teams in the past they never had such regular um, interaction with top quality, speedy rugby. And yeah. it's done them a world of good because they already have the physicality, they already understand the game in that way. But to have regular reps at a high level yeah. is just going to help them the deal difference. with the chaos yeah, yeah. a little more that's yeah. coming from this Georgian team. Um, but I must say that there's a there there are issues here for them. They they are not coming in all guns blazing. No. They're missing really probably a list of their best players. They're missing um and Nini Ashvili picked up a knock. He's going to be out. Yeah, um, and Mika, Mika Tadze as well. But also Saganadze, probably their best huge. back rower. Well, I think he's there with, you know, the Jalagonias, Jirgadze, Gorgadze. Yeah, but um, with Becca Gorgadze missing as well. Missing, yeah. um, Kvesaladze there, they're all class 13. He's going to be out as well. Yeah. Um, so they're actually missing kind of some of their very best players. They will still have a good back row to pick uh, 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 in, in Gorgadze, I think they'll go with. And uh, Tutskaridza and then... Um, Jeez, uh, they have a couple. They have a couple of other they options. Have, Jalagonia, maybe Jalagonia from the Ritz. Been brilliant um, as well, yeah, yeah. He, um, he, they might get him involved, but they are missing their two best uh, ball playing options and their two guys who are used to playing on the edge. Indeed, Jalagonia, uh, Jalagonia can maybe wreck that, but it is it's it definitely a, a loss for them. A little yeah, bit yeah. Uh, losing of some dimensions, or do you know, do, is there a test? Will they still be develop at all costs, or is it win at all costs? And will you see some of these guys who haven't mm-hmm. been frontline starters? Still trying to play with the same endeavor to get wide as we yeah. saw last year remains to be seen. Well, one of the things that I like is that they've got this guy, and I'm not sure if he'll feature, but uh, uh, Torniki uh, Kakoidza, 
Um, he's from uh, he's basically a, a, an eighteen year old kid who has shown in their under eighteens and then under twenties teams. Get him in. Speedy plays center, Love starts it. from everywhere, plays Kavesalads's position thirteen. Given he's out, I would love to see them give this kid a go, and maybe he'll get like another Nini Ashvili yeah, out, another class so baller. You're to talking about like sexy Georgian back, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, whoa, what, what kind of world am I living in? They're, but it could be their uh, capacity to develop talent has been extremely impressive, yeah. and uh, well, they'll have to try and get things right, obviously, um, in terms of selection because they want the, the best quality options that are in. They're still, for my eye, a little weak at hooker. I still think I just they don't really like the stock of hooker that they're yeah. they're, they're uh, well, comparative, compar- comparative, especially um, because the prop talent is deep and ma- and wide yes. and, and is the biggest point of difference still even despite all the chat about developing back play and using yeah. the full width of the pitch and exiting more efficiently and developing kicking game and all of that stuff being more proactive on the defense which they have been as well on the thing all of that is good but the main point of difference between them and the rest of this competition is the collision zone and more specifically the set mm. piece collision zone yeah. of scrummaging like the expertise and just the the innate understanding of the grappling exchanges that go on at scrum time that all Georgian props seem to have that has led to them being the first of the uh, of the Georgian contingent to, uh, contingent to break into France like teams like Montpellier constantly mining at least one or two Georgian props on their books at any given time because they are such a point of difference for them and that is where like if they're going into the nitty gritty if it's in the tight if it's going to be a, a tough game for the which it should be because Portugal are going to come all guns glazing the biggest point of difference will still be that traditional strength of power up front yeah um, and it, could, it comes mainly from the props because that is where they are at their most expert compared to some of these other tier two sides yeah and also um, just broadly speaking the forward pack and the contact yeah. i mean they're they're going to collision zone yeah, wide, yeah they're, they're going to want to have those big offensive moments where they go through sequences they find the edge and then they win contacts against the, the comparatively smaller portuguese players where they can be both dynamic and explosive. That's where guys like Saganadza have been so important for them. Obviously, in his absence, you'll need guys like Giorgadza, like Gelagonia, to come in and be that same explosive presence. Yeah. Having back rowers on the edge, getting physically just running over the top of players and then and linking then, up yes, with their better indeed. quality passing game has been just a really great way for the Georgians to enter. And they can also fight what Portugal have been bringing on offense from a clinical point of view with their own brand of clinicality where they don't kick for threes as good as Tato's goal kicking can be, but they go to the corners, yeah. they drain Slowly them physically and, and they to find death. tries. Yeah. yeah, not just malls, but also no, just no, the, the ex- carries. Ex- Exeter style yeah, ball. Yeah. They can tap and go. They um, love setting up a drive that'll last the next 10 minutes and force this, 30 tackles it, out of you yeah, before finally resulting in an <laughs> inevitable 70 points. That has yeah. been their MO, but they are moving away from that a little more, but they still need to be clinical in those areas. Oh, it's not really doing it. Yeah, like, it's, it, it doesn't need to be the 10 minute drive as much no. as it just needs to amount to tries. Just Physical, good, seven. short range tries can be a way to combat the clinicality of Portugal. Um, but it's the defense. Like if this Portuguese team that teams find so tricky to figure out when they're running all these inside angles at you. Mm. Like with Tato defending that channel, yeah. I think they're going to have to And certainly, be, like if you're talking about chopping yeah. and changing the back row, which is going to have to be forced now from the yeah. guys who are in incumbents, and you're missing your 13 who had been a linchpin. Yeah. As far as defensive roles, well, those are big defensive yeah. roles, and Portugal target all of those areas. Yeah, it's the captain. So, it's the captain yeah. who has to lead it, Shara Kadza. Yeah. He's only 28. He's been there forever. He's only 28. He's coming into his peak. Yeah. He's coming off the best season he's ever played. Yeah, he was he's brilliant, brilliant last year. Like, True. really, because there was a time when I was thinking, this guy doesn't have it. Mm. And he just, a bit like his coach, Levan Maisashvili, has just come up with the answers in the last year in a real big way. Yeah. And he's been the captain of Black Lion as well. He's got a good bit of professional reps in this year. And I think, yeah, he's, he's the guy who's going to have to lead that defence and try and shut down what they're bringing, along with the combination of the back row and the inside. Agreed. Just don't, don't give them that space. They love that space so much. Portela, he just wants to cut back inside. There are some tens who, like, they can all, like, good tens can do everything. But there are some tens who just love doing one thing in particular, yeah. and they'll go back to that time and time again. And Portela likes to step inside and throw an inside ball like nothing yeah. in this world. It is fullback who's running the perfect line. exactly. Yeah. That's that's what they love to do. That's what you got to take away as, as your first point of call, and also just make things as messy as possible from yeah, Marrakesh. Slow, if you can slow, rush, if you can rough him up, yeah. that's it, well, it starts with winning the collision yeah, yeah, yeah. as is always part, and then make the rook a mess, and then suddenly it's like five six second rooks, and that inside ball is not anymore, and you're covering yeah. it. Um, 
but yeah, those are big defensive tests. So they were more proactive on the defensive side last year. They were bringing line speed. They were being physical in, yeah. in, in their hits. And they were committing to a few numbers, but not to dead rooks. They were disrupting, and they were kind of controlling games off the back of that. And yeah, it's a big test with Portugal coming to town for them as well. Yeah, indeed. And I, I think Tato's job is going to be very important as well, just in the kicking game, but also the distribution game, making sure they're accessing the width. Showing, like last year, he looked kind of head and shoulders the best 10 in the competition. As good as Portela was in Ordas in moments. Tato looked mature. He yeah. looked like he'd really he like benefited. Tours, he yeah, was, he, he was benefited from his time in the top of Tours and he was, he was doing good things, making good decisions, um, looking sharp in all areas of the game. And if he can bring that and just be a difference maker, control where the game's being played and make the incisive moves at the right times, that could be the difference between winning and losing for sure. Because I think Portugal... There's no doubt about it. Are going to put it up to them. Yeah, I would agree. And speaking of Portugal, how are they going to put it up to them with the same kind of razzle dazzle that we saw last year? They're going to be trying to set a tempo that is ferocious. Marques loves a quick tap if it's on, you know, and, and yeah. he will try and be their tempo provider. But uh, it's the lines of running and the ambition of pass and of play that uh, that really sets this team apart. And it means that they are never out of contests because they can find tries against anyone, and they have confidence to do that. It means that like. Even going a score or two down, with when you're a team that plays the way Portugal do, it's not necessarily doom and gloom at that point. You know you can strike, and you can strike when it's when it's there and when it's quick. They do know that this is statistically and and just generally the toughest test they face year on year. They're going yep. to Tbilisi to face Georgia, which is just the the toughest game it's, they play. Yeah, ever. it's a little Eastern um, European tour for them because they have this game and then they have the remaining game. Yeah, what a way to start the tournament. Stuff you know, I mean, at the yeah, start listen, of the game. they they go zero and two. They're going to be possibly out of the running for rugby Europe too and, and maybe going for the third spot if they are a spot away. against Spain or someone yeah yeah, yeah. It, it can get very rough very quickly and so they're going to need to arrive at the absolute pitch they have been brilliant they were the find of last year they were they have some real star quality as well as some as well as some uh, brilliant coaching I think uh, Patrice uh, uh, Lagiske um, or Lagiske has been like a, a really mighty find for them I think they were uh, uh, Storty was doing an interview just the 21 year old winger who got that five try game up yes. against uh, the Dutch he was talking about him saying like he's a very demanding coach and he tries to make sure that every player uses their skill set and, and improves their skills time after time after time yeah. he's a nice person no. personally but he's very demanding and that he was giving them strict kind of things to do over the winter to keep working on the individual skills and make sure that they can execute the fast game that they want to execute. Yeah. Well, they were like talking about that Japan game yeah. that they had, where it was all that was the story. It's like these are the guys, This is the team we're modeling on from tier two to tier one. How to yeah. do it? Japan is the answer. Let's be Japan. Yeah. And they gave Japan a right old rattle last year. To, they did. We're very nearly nicked it, but for a Portela, if it was only a dummy and then give, then maybe it was a famous Portugal win. But uh, you know, it means that they they know that they're on the right track already. Um, they're not complacent because obviously Spain's rallying towards the end of last season will show that like job's not done job's only oh, half far done much, yeah. we're still only level on points with, with we're, Romania we're, and one thing that doesn't stand to their credit and is still in, in their bank as a, a niggle particularly as they have Georgia this week and Romania next week was just the manner in which they blew that Romania game mm. towards the death in that last year like we were talking about Romania having their own demons from the Russia game last year yeah, Portugal had that game won, but they did all their celebrating and their adrenaline dumping with 10 minutes left on the clock and then lost it yep. from there. They faded um, against Georgia too last year. They had the lead for parts of that game and then they faded towards the yeah. end as the Georgian pressure came on. And it's mm. definitely like they did work on it as the season went on yeah. and they got better at it. But even, even so, even in some of those blowout games, mm. they didn't end the games in the strongest way. No. And they didn't end the game even against the game in Japan. Russia, which they did blow yeah. them out in. It was they, more scoring in the first half than the second. Yeah. You know? and, um, and the same the same again you can say about the Japan game where yeah. they ended with a tired interception that they yeah. wouldn't have thrown in the first quarter sure but just there is a question about their fitness and one hopes they've worked on that yeah the Lusitanos in the rugby Europe Super Cup have been going really well yeah. and there's a been massive, dominating. massive degree that, of them that are in there yeah. including Captain Appleton from centre yeah. but there's like I think 15 or so there's a full squad of yeah. Lusitanos in their squad as well so for, as far as cohesion and uh, and preparation all of that is there for them to mine from as well and they are a very well gelled side that was what was striking going into last season was just 
how gelled they were to begin with when you were contrasting them with Spain who were the ones talking a big game about playing with all this flow and flair and tempo and they were a raggedy bunch that couldn't string anything together Portugal were the one who found their straps early but for things like letting that Romania position slide yeah, they find themselves right in the dogfight they again. also improved obviously Georgia and Romania were the toughest tests but after those two games um, where they managed just the 16 points against Georgia which is creditable enough yeah um, they they uh, that was their lowest scoring total of the year last year. Very they managed nice. at least twenty in every other game, mm-hmm. including forty nine and six uh, forty nine and sixty one away yeah. in Russia and the Netherlands, forty three against Spain, yeah. and twenty five against the Japanese. Very impressive. Like they they do consistently find ways to score tries, and that is a positive because yeah. Georgia are. Now, they were the exception to the rule, which is obviously going to be difficult. They are more physical even than Japan or any of the teams sure. they played. Yeah. But oh, I still think, are, like yeah. Georgia in Tbilisi on day one of Rugby Europe is a tougher test for Portugal than Japan at home after a long season. And a tough guy after, after a tough defeat to Ireland yeah, as well. Yeah, they were yeah. just on a low ebb. There's yeah. no doubt about that. Yeah. yeah, this is a tougher game for them. But the fact that they're consistently finding tries with their speedy play, consistently catching teams off guard, they're playing better rugby than they were in the corresponding fixture last year where they mixed it with the Lelos. It's going to be it's going to be a, a definite opportunity for them, and I think they'll come in on a confident ebb. Like they had the breaks, couple of breaks last year. It seemed, didn't seem to do them any harm. They've another yeah. winter break now, and now they're going to come back in, hopefully fit, raring to go yeah. with a few Lusitanos caps in them. And now it's it's time to do or die and do to show die. up and maybe shock the world. Yeah, with a, shock with the world win. with a win over yeah. Georgia, and then that would be such a win against the pack as well. In the context of this, uh, you know, points points against the field and in the race for the oh, World Cup, it? it would change um, it would everything. Be huge. Yeah. Um, that being said, how how do you see it going uh, in your mind's eye out in Tbilisi? Yeah, it's 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 tough. I like listen. Um, Georgia are without their best players, I think you know, Miniashvili um, and Saganadza were difference makers for them mm-hmm. so and a gap at 13 with Veselazza who hadn't been in his best form no but like just as far as defensive surety versus but, Portugal's off Portugal's but, offense yeah, I, if I was to pick two players who were standouts those were the two I'd go for mm-hmm. um, and so that definitely is a, is a leveler but I think I have enough confidence maybe in what Jordan have been doing both in terms of their offense just like a bit like Ireland just mm-hmm introducing more footballing quality to their physicality and marrying yeah. them really well yeah and then just and the set really, piece and not really stepping off in as far as the set piece as you're yeah, saying the set, like, the set yeah, piece yeah. and the forward pack well the gap between it's not it's not just the starting guys yeah. but the guys who are going to come off the bench and scrummage against those Georgian yeah. bench so, so, uh, subs from Portugal those are the guys so it's who a, need to step exactly. up exactly it's, it's a question of not being caught Portugal's path to victory involves taking an early lead yeah. for sure oh yeah um, but the Georgians if they can prevent that from happening, especially at home in front of some fans, if they can get a good start and be bullish and physical and, and defensively sound and make it difficult for Portugal, yeah, I think they'll I think they'll take it in the end. But I think it'll be close and I think I think Georgia will do just enough. I think they might have to come back from maybe five or six points behind to, to steal the game by about four or something. Something like, you know, twenty two to, to 20 or something close I think yeah yeah yeah. Uh, reasonable I think you're probably right on that uh, I think with Georgia are obviously firm favourites you don't get very far but I think losing them. bonus point at least for Portugal yeah I'd like that do you know yeah. what I'm going to go out on a limb and say that uh, that Portugal shocked them on the opening oh, day and put themselves on I just, I just really love Portugal I can't overstate <laughs> yeah. how much I love this Portugal team so I want nothing but good things I actually I want them at the World Cup to be honest as much as I like I like all of it a lot of the other teams can mixing it for it I just think I I I think they deserve it I think they've been bloody brilliant and I think they've been great value but uh, it doesn't always work out that way and I I know I'm going against the grain here because Russia or sorry Georgia in Tbilisi come on now that is your favourite uh, your favourite tag but I'm going to say you know I mean there's there's legitimacy Um, there's legitimacy to it who do you got let us know down in the comments below because it is a doozy of a game a wonderful clash of styles it turns out, by the way, that Roman Poit, uh, despite retiring from Test Rugby in November, is back to ref this game. So oh, look forward to that. That's uh, uh, probably yeah. will benefit the Georgians, given he tends to favour a scrum going forward, which you know could be a difference maker. That is true. That is true as well. Especially if it's cold. If Portugal are a little cold and dropping some balls, and then every scrum turns into a penalty. Yeah, that's obviously that's a that's a recipe for disaster for them. Then, but uh, no, I'm going to say us 
Lobos for the win. Well, I love Just it. Just about, I love it. And on that know. bombshell, <laughs> to, to, to steal a quote from Jeremy Clarkson, we're going to wrap up the Rugby Europe coverage for this show for the opening weekend. And it is a good one. And I like us. I like someone going against the grain. It's yeah. nice. Good on you for doing that. I couldn't <laughs> quite do it, but uh, it's... Ah, I mean, to be fair, it's not wise, but let's do it. Well, sure, who knows? <laughs> Maybe they'll shock the world. Um, yeah. But la- that wraps up Rugby Europe for week one. It's a wonderfully great competition. It's, m- it's much more easy on the eye than it used to be from an offensive point of view. There's real quality involved and just the stakes. The stakes are a different level. Like we think of the stakes in the Six Nations as being huge, and they are huge, but just that the difference that qualifying versus not qualifying for World Cup makes to these nations, the emotional output, the, the amount that's hedged on it, the financial, the financial the huge windfall financial comes, windfall yeah. is right yeah. for the team that qualifies. It's just the stakes are to the nth degree, to the, to the maximum, to 11. Yeah, um, indeed. And uh, yeah, so I, I think that this is going to be an absolute joy to watch and I just cannot wait to see all these games play out. Um, it's going to be a really, really fun tournament. Yeah, agreed. Thank you for watching the Overlap Rugby podcast. If you enjoyed that video, please be sure to like and uh, share with your friends. And if you'd like to hear more of what we have to say, please be sure to subscribe and click that bell so you get notified when we upload our videos. And uh, please join the comment section as well. We like to get a fun conversation going here.